I'm a fine artist and a teacher and I'm so happy to be here with you today teaching you how to make painted pinwheels on wooden blocks. So hopefully you were able to pick up your supplies at the library. We're going to be making four wood blocks today and you might have seen a funny word in the description called a polyptych, if you want to try saying it at home, polyptych. Polyptych just means a grouping of paintings, different paintings that are put together to form one painting. You can have a diptych, which is two paintings put together, or a triptych, which is three paintings put together. I'd just like to give you a little bit of an art history lesson on modern art because I want you to be thinking of that when you're working. Modern art was a time period, started around the 1860s and goes to about the 1950s to 70s. And it was started around the Industrial Revolution, and during the Industrial Revolution there was a lot of change and new ideas, a lot of new inventions coming about and travel. And so this directly affected the way artists started thinking about art. Before this, many paintings were made, um, they, were, they depicted family scenes, there were people, there were landscapes, um, still lives, or biblical scenes, maybe mythical scenes. And a lot of times, a wealthy family or a church would go to an artist and say, please paint me a picture of this. Like um, a church would go to Caravaggio and say, please paint me the calling of St. Matthew. And Caravaggio would paint it and it would be given to the church. The church would pay him. That's called commissioned. So then comes the Industrial Revolution. All this change happening. All these new ideas. Well, art is definitely right in there in the center of it. Artists started thinking a lot more about how they interpret art. When they look at a scene, do they just see that scene or do they see something else? When they look at a person, how can they paint that to make it reflect how they see it? Thinking about their process more than just the outcome, thinking about the process of painting. They were thinking about color and shapes and uh, movement. New ways of thinking and making art and kind of stepping away from how art used to be made this, this was called avant-garde, and that's another great art word, and I want you to try to say it at home, avant-garde, and you're going to use it in a sentence with your parents. You're going to say, oh, that, that um, painting is very, was very avant-garde for its time period. I hope you do that. So these, uh, an avant-garde just means new and different from the old, and a lot of times these paintings weren't accepted. People thought they were terrible. They were just they, that didn't look like a person, that doesn't look like a landscape. So at the time, they weren't really accepted. Obviously now we look back at them and we kind of see the whole history, but at the time they were not. So avant-garde, new, different, throwing away the ideas of the old, stepping forward with new ideas. So under this umbrella of modern art, there are several movements. And I'm just going to give you some examples of each of the movements and show you a piece from each. So there's Impressionism. This was kind of the start of modern art. Post-Impressionism, Fauvism, Expressionism, Cubism, followed by the Dada movement, Surrealism, and then Abstract Expressionism, also known as Abex. And that was definitely about the process of painting rather than making a finished product that looked like something. It was all about process. And you can see a Jackson Pollock in Albany. I'll tell you about that in just a minute. So after modern art is contemporary art, and that started around 1970s and goes till now. So if you'd like to see some modern art in person, which I really encourage you to do when you feel comfortable, you can either go to New York City and there's the Museum of Modern Art, also known as MoMA, or you don't have to go that far. You can go right to Albany and there's a lovely collection of modern art put together by Governor Rockefeller. And you've probably walked down that like hallway and seen art on the sides. That's Those are modern art pieces, but you can also go up to a gallery. I think you take an escalator up and there's a Jackson Pollock up there and there's more pieces that you can check out. And there's nothing like seeing art face to face in person. It's definitely different than looking at a picture in a book. So I just wanna show you three examples of pieces you can actually see in Albany. There's Mark Rothko's Untitled, Alvin Loving, New Morning, one, and Donald Judd's 
untitled. So I'm just showing you these three examples because I want you to think about them when you start making art. Okay, so we had our little mini art history lesson about modern art, and now like I said, I just wanted to dip our paintbrushes into a smidge of color theory. And color theory is colors, mixing colors, making colors, what that means. And it's a very vast topic. I spent a lot of time in college learning color theory. These are just um, some value charts that I did when I was in college just learning about what what makes different colors what happens when you mix colors the one little aspect we're going to work talk about today is chromatic grayscales now a lot of times you think okay i want to make a color darker i want to make my red darker so the first thing you think is might be i'm going to add black well today let's think about a different way of making colors dark and this is really important. So black isn't a color so when you mix black with a color it's just going to muddy it and it's not going to be a really good true color. So this scale right here, um, these are this down here represents colors from the tube okay so you have your greens, your uh, blue and violets and then your blue and yellow and then up here different colors these are from the tube. So you have your color wheel, right? So what you want to do on your color wheel is look at two opposites. So we're going to take this for example, red and green. They're opposites on the color wheel, okay? They're complementary colors. You can mix its complement with it to make it darker and it's going to give you a truer color. I have my red and what happens here is I just added a tiny smidge of this green. A little bit more green, a little bit more green. Look at that in the middle. This I started with my green from the tube and added a little bit of red and a little bit more. This line right here in the middle, they are called the chromatic rays. So that just means when you mix the two complements together, you get a chromatic gray, equal parts of the both of them. Okay, so the see how, it, see how I started with this red and I just added a touch of the green, how much darker it got? And that's a much better quality dark red than if you were to add black. And again, here you have a purple and a green. When you add just a touch of purple to the screen, see how it becomes darker. Instead of adding black to a color, add its complement to make it darker. Okay, now on with the tutorial. You're just gonna need a few things from home, a ruler or straight edge, a pencil, and a scrap piece of paper or newspaper to work on. And here's a look at the supplies you picked up from the library. Your four blocks of wood, your roll of tape, some sandpaper, your paint pots, of course yours will be filled with paints, and then a paintbrush. And I just wanna say a quick thing about this wood. This was sawn locally by my father-in-law. He has a sawmill and um, it's beautiful wood. And some of them have, you'll, you might have one with a knot in it or a crack. I think that's really cool because it shows what it is. It's wood, it's natural. If we wanted perfection, we would have painted on, you know, something plastic that has no no character. I really enjoy the the little knots and the and the lines of the wood. So, you can either cover that up or you can work with it. I think it's really beautiful and I think it makes your piece more interesting. So, we're all set up and ready to go. The first thing we want to do is just pick a spot on our block and draw a very light dot. It can be here, there, wherever, okay? You pick it. When you're working with a pencil on this wood, I want you to think about mice tracks. You can either do elephant tracks where you're really grinding in your pencil really hard, like that, or you can do mice tracks, which is like that. I want you to work in mice tracks for this, okay? We don't wanna see your pencil when you're done. We want it to just be paint and wood. I'm gonna draw mine right there, okay? From that dot, I'm gonna decide how many colors I'd like on here. So for this one, I've got one, two, three, four. These, these parts are left natural wood. I really like how that looks. Over here on this one, I've got one, two, three, four, five colors. Okay, you can kind of plan out how many colors you want. All you're gonna do is go from that dot very lightly, and we're gonna start making our sections of our pinwheel. Okay, so there's one. Maybe I want this next one, and I'm pushing really light, even lighter than that. The next one I want to be like that. This third, I'm gonna go way, make it way over here. And I'm gonna do one more right here, okay? So I've got 
one, two, three, four, five, six colors. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I have six colors that I'm gonna use in this one. So I'm gonna put in a few more spaces so I can have that natural wood poking through. I'm gonna make a really skinny one right here. Okay, so I've kind of thought about what colors I wanna use and now I've got it all set. Okay, that's your first step. Next thing you wanna do is take a little bit of your tape. You only have a certain amount of this, so use sparingly. So let's see, I'm going to paint this section first, okay? So all I do is take my tape, take off a little bit, very carefully line the tape up right on the line. Now you'll see, you see a little bit of the pencil there? I do that because then when you paint, it's gonna paint over that pencil mark and we won't see it, okay? So I've got that, I'm painting this section. I'm gonna take another little piece and just put it right over there. Line it up as best as you can and really press it down with your finger. This is just a masking tape. It's gonna make our lines really nice and neat. Now that my section is taped off, I'm gonna pick my color that I wanna use. I chose this orange. Your paint is going to be in this little, these little paint pots. You can just leave it in there and dip your paintbrush right into it. I just suggest you use sparingly so that you have enough paint to do all four squares. But I'm just gonna do it for my demonstration. I'm gonna just use this here. Just get a little bit of paint and paint your square. You're gonna paint till it's all filled up. This is a tip for when you're painting near the edge. If you come this way with your paintbrush, you're gonna get paint all over here. So go, if you paint in this direction to the edge, you'll have a nice clean edge. And just let that coat dry completely. Between coats, you wanna make sure you wash your paintbrush to make it last a long time. And all you do is gently run it under warm water and rub it around in your hand while running it under water and make sure you can go like this to make sure all the paint is out of your bristles. Give it a little dry on a towel and lay it flat to dry. While you're waiting for that one to dry, you can go ahead and do your lines on this one and then start working on a section of this one. While you're waiting for that to dry, you can come back to this one or start on a new one. So it's kind of nice to be working on all four pieces at, at the same time. That way you're not just waiting around for paint to dry. So once that first layer has dried, you're going to apply your second coat of paint and cover it completely so you get a nice bright color. You're going to wash your brush. Before it dries, you're going to take off that tape. And you'll see how nice and crisp that is. Okay, so now my orange is dry and I'm gonna fill in another piece of the pie. I think I'd like to leave this one wood and maybe this one wood and I'll fill in the rest of the colors. So I'm gonna work away from that orange while that's drying and I'm gonna do this color right here. And I am going to choose this kind of copper, copper gold that I have. So again, I'm just gonna pick my section that I want to paint, take a little piece of tape. You're gonna wait till that's completely dry, okay? Line it up, press it down, another piece. Oops, that might be too small, let's see. I think it's just right, okay? So now I've got another section I'm gonna take my next color, fill it in, let it dry, and give it a second coat. Before that second coat is dry, you're gonna peel that tape off. Just a few things as you're working. When you have a color and you wanna put a color next to it, it's okay to put this tape right over that other color. This is, this is paint-friendly tape, so it's not gonna hurt that color underneath. If you want, you can always reuse the other edge of this tape. You just have a small amount of paint to work with, very small amount. So when you dip into your little paint pot, if you have extra paint on your, on your brush after you've given it a coat, just take your brush and, and wipe it along the, the ridge of the little paint pot and you can put that extra paint right back in so you're not wasting any. Okay, so I just finished up the colors on this one and I added a few more. Um, I added a blue next to the orange because I think they look really cool together. They're compliments. So I want you to think about your paintings and I want you to think about your, your negative space, your positive space, how you're going to fill this in. My challenge to you is use colors that you don't wouldn't normally think. Kind of think outside the box. So, you know, maybe you would never use this kind of olivey green next to a pink. Um, but try it. Try different colors. Try it on, you know, a little piece of paper. You can also just dab a little color uh, samples on a piece of paper, see how it looks together before you paint on the wood. Okay, so then you're gonna have your four 
painted blocks, your polyp tick all done. If you wanted to just take your piece when your paint is fully dry and you're just going to sand those corners. What that's gonna do is just, if you got any paint over on the side, it's just gonna clean it up and then you can wipe that, you can wipe that paint dust off. If you would like to hang these, you could, these, these will stand on their own if, you, you, if you'd like to kind of lean them up, you know, like that, you can do that. Or um, sometimes I use this, this command, um, they're like Velcro strips from Command and then they don't damage your wall. You just separate the two and you'd stick one on the back of your piece, one on the wall. If you wanted to hang it more like that. Okay guys, well that was a lot to learn. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed working with you, making these little modern art inspired pinwheel cookies. I do love teaching in person, but since we can't do that now, I, I'm still glad I can do this. The one thing I do miss is seeing your finished work. So if you'd like to share with me what you've done, you can have your parent take a photo of your final work and email it to me. I'll leave my email at the end. And I also usually post uh, photos on my art blog, which I'll also leave at the end. So please feel free to send that along. It makes me so happy to see what you guys have made. So until next time, bye.